50th anniversary of the Super Bowl. Anybody that was part of a Super Bowl winning team throughout the first half century of the game is presenting a number of football to their high school. And so that is why Kyle is here today at halftime of our game against Central. He'll be presenting our school with a commemorative game ball uh, for the accomplishment that he earned being part of the Super Bowl champion ball for the uh, So without further ado, Kyle Richardson. Perfect, perfect. That was uh, well done, well done. Um, so this ball, which you guys to actually see, has anybody seen this? You guys know what this is? Has anybody heard about this? So if you're watching NFL football this year, like Coach said, 50 years. And so this ball is now given to everybody, as he said, for that play and won a Super Bowl. Yeah. So when I got down to Arkansas State, it wasn't necessarily the easiest thing. I go down there, and there was nine other walk-ons trying to get this job like I was. But what ultimately happened was one of the first coaches down there uh, was a, special, was a uh, coach from the NFL, and his name was Ray Perkins. And I remember him saying that there was going to be two guys by the time our four or five years were up that were going to be there that were former walk-ons from our original year that I started. And that turned out to be true. It was myself and a guy named Ray Robbins. He was a defensive back. But it tells you the attrition rate. And it tells you that if you're not really willing to focus and keep working day to day, that may not happen. So I overcame a lot of challenges just to get into Arkansas State and to actually get a scholarship, which is what I really, really wanted. Every night, I was thinking about it and I dedicated myself to it. But I actually worked really hard wherever the field is out here. Same kind of facility, guys. I mean, this field is, has changed, but it's in the same exact location that you guys are going to play out there tonight. So there's things change, buildings change, people change, but town, the places that you come from, the people that you are a part of in the community, these are people that you can look to and actually aspire to go somewhere else. If you choose, you can choose to do whatever you want to do here in this town. Maybe it's own the local gas station or something, and you become a, an empire of that and be successful. Whatever you want to do, it can be done out of Farmington, Missouri. That's what I want this ball to represent. So when I went to Arkansas, got the scholarship my second year after redshirting, I played the next four years, I started every game, didn't miss any, and as a result, in two more weeks from now, I'll be going down to Arkansas, and they're inducting me into their Hall of Fame. So, all these opportunities that I have now received, this being one of them, I never thought about it while I was in the moment. These are just opportunities that keep presenting themselves all along the process. And you guys are gonna have opportunity out there tonight to make one play get up and go do the next play. And though all those multiple plays will add up to some type of success. You hope the success is what you wanted, which is a win. So then you go back to where I was at Arkansas State. And I played for four years, five years, redshirt my first. And then I'm thinking, okay, well, now I'm graduating. I'm gonna go out into the workforce where I might try to try this uh, NFL thing. The NFL thing was, again, a whole opportunity that I had to try to bust in somewhere. There was, nobody was giving me any job right away. I was drafted. It was essentially another walk-on trying to make it into the NFL. So I took $10,000 from my mom and dad, alone, with interest, <laughs> to be paid back at some point <laughs> later in the future. <laughs> and I moved myself to a place to help raise my talent level and become better at that craft. I was pretty good in college, good enough that I actually got into the their Hall of Fame, obviously, or will be. But it wasn't good enough for the NFL. So I had to figure out what can I surround myself to even make myself that much better. So each step along the way, I listened to myself and I believed in myself. And I had a friend call me. 
I was two months after graduation at Arkansas State. And this is a guy named Lloyd White. Lloyd was from Missouri. He was a third team linebacker at Arkansas State at the time. We were there the whole time together. And he calls me up. He says he's in Virginia. So said, well, Lloyd, what are you doing in Virginia? Lloyd was kind of an oddball, but uh, he was a good oddball because he was always thinking and always wanting to do better. But he says, I'm out in Virginia, remember he was a linebacker, trying to be a place kicker and make it into the NFL. See, Lloyd always had a dream that he was going to be a place kicker, only he couldn't do it at college at Arkansas State, he was just not good enough. So he became a linebacker and backed up and actually played success uh, at Arkansas State for three or four years successfully as a backup linebacker. So Lloyd says, Kyle, you need to come out here. This a kicking coach in Virginia, and he'd be good for you. And I think, well, I'm in Jonesboro. This is not what I want my life to be. I want to try to take ten thousand dollars from mom and dad and see what happens. So I did that. I went out. I got some training. Within that period of time, I called up the guy that gave me my scholarship, which was that original coach at Arkansas State. His name was Ray Perkins. Same Ray that I was talking about. <coughs> At this point, Ray had moved on to the NFL. He had been a former NFL coach himself, very seasoned coach. Played, he coached the New York Giants and uh, drafted Lawrence Taylor. So I took this guy's number before he left, thinking that if there was ever an opportunity, I'd want to reconnect with him. When he left college, before I was graduating, he had left to go back into the NFL coaching. I took his number. And at that point, after Lloyd calls me, got some funding from the, the good home hometown, <laughs> and I called up that number to Ray Perkins. Hand to shake it, right? Is this guy going to even remember me? Will he even take his call? Is this even his, his number? It's a cell number. He answers. He said, yeah, Kyle, I remember you. How can I help you? I took that opportunity to say, how can I get into the NFL? He makes a few calls. I get an opportunity to go into the world. And that opportunity parlayed the story that Coach just talked about. Do we understand how opportunity can be presented? Is that, do we understand this? I want, I want everybody to understand this, right? So you can start one spot. It's never gonna be a straight line. It's gonna be zigzag. But if you have your point A and you have your point B, it's gonna be like this. And you can get the point B. That's, that's my story, right? So I made the NFL, did all that, that's great. What I learned, this is what I learned, what I observed out of those years. One year overseas in Europe, which was fun, and then nine years in the NFL when I came back. Was that, what the skill that I came to learn to do, better than any of that, which was a craft, something that, uh, you know, Austin back here, you guys know Austin. He's one to be a part of. This can be up for any position, all right? And hopefully this translates to what you guys are gonna deal with on the field tonight. But the craft that I figured out, that I can do just as well as anyone. Yeah, I had talent at that point to apply to this skill of hunting at a professional level, but there was a mental level. And it was never deny a negative. Right? Because we're all going to have something bad go happen. Have something bad happen. So you never deny a negative, meaning you observe that play. You say, damn, that sucked. You don't say it to yourself, you'll be stuck in that moment. Now, I haven't been here to watch you guys' season, but I bet there's been a couple moments, those few little minutes of the game, maybe at the end of the game, something didn't work. And if you guys are stuck in that moment, you won't get on to the positive moment that should happen, therefore. Does that make sense? You've got to get out. And the way you do that is you observe a negative, and you get beyond it, you say, you say, look, that sucked. Say it to yourself out there on the field tonight. Whatever you got to do, yell it in your, in your head. Yell it out in your face mask. That will reset your body to go back out there and to do the next play, even if it's right two seconds later, all right? It's the easiest, simplest thing to do 
but you may not know to do it if you're not told. I learned over a long period of time that that is what helped me survive the NFL because NFL is always about your next play. It's not that play, it's the next play, right? Number two, what I observed. Now I'm putting all this in, all those 10 years that I got to a professional level, really understanding how to make, maximize. Everybody in the NFL is great, great. Skill level, all that. But it's this other little bit that makes that difference. This other little bit is your mental capacity and mentally moving on from bad plays because they're going to happen. And the last bit is your motor. You have a motor that's never going to quit. I watched Ray Lewis in that locker room. You guys know Ray? You've heard of Ray? Intense dude, right? Intense is one thing. Understanding the plays, understanding and anticipating the next play, where, where he might be is one thing. That's his, that was his great skill, but he had a motor. He was playing hard on every play. And that's what, when you see these guys make a difference, it's their motor that they don't take plays off. They are lining up, they are going one play after another. They just play. At that point, you better have a play, know the playbook, you play instinctively, you go out there and you just play. But you don't ever take a play off. If you take a play off, if you're trying to play college football and you're on film, those coaches, they're gonna watch that film, right? They're gonna watch and they're gonna look and they're gonna say, who took a play off? I want you all to go to college. I want you all to have this opportunity. I want you all to know, when I was in high school here, I hated high school. I hated high school from the perspective of schooling itself. Hate's a strong word. Maybe I better back that up. <laughs> I disliked it because it was not easy for me. School was not easy, right? But I knew it was the necessary thing that I had to do to get to that next stage of my life. So you always got to stay within your school. And you've got to do whatever you got to do. So just know, I'm, I'm just trying to be honest with you guys, right? There are things in life that you just got to do, and that is one thing. Never deny a negative. Have a motor. Good things happen when you have a motor. There was a guy, that, one of the greatest coaches I was around was a guy named Marvin Lewis. He's a Bengals coach. He's a great coach. Really was a guy that I learned from watching and listening. As a head, now he's the head coach of the Bengals. His one thing that he kept telling his guys, if you get around the ball, good things happen. Make sense? Good things happen if you get around the ball. But you can't get around the ball if you don't have a motor. This make sense? I really, this is what I wanted to tell you guys. And so when you go see that ball throughout the week, hopefully you'll walk by and go to class. Think about what I shared with you. Think about, there's a compassion here, right? Do you feel it, right? You have to have that. And when you go out there tonight, you gotta have the passion. Don't take plays off. There's gonna be something that's gonna, throughout that game, be up and down. But it's always about the next play. Observe it and you move on. You go and you play and you keep that motor. So I'll leave it at that, guys. And I, does, does anybody have any questions? Anything you want to ask me? Any other thoughts? I know you got the game on the mind tonight, but hopefully you guys are connected, right? Give me a question. Thoughts? Anything? Just thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. What was the hardest uh, thing in college football? Yeah. College football was dealing with the other guys or your coaches, right? This is a tough locker room. It only gets tougher in the pros. Tough being everybody wears their armor. When you get in coaches, they look for chinks in the armor, right? Because what are coaches looking for? They're looking for trust. They're looking for guys that they can look at and say, your, your head coach is looking at it right now. He's saying, who can I trust? Who can I trust on this play? You, 
do that through obviously having the motor, paying attention, being a guy, you know, being involved, join the people that you're around, have compassion. Coach is always going to give the upper hand to a guy that loves to get out there and play, have the compassion, and have a motor. So that's hard, that, and that's the thing. I, I learned personalities, you know, college, coaches, people coming and going, but the game itself was not that much different. Here's what I did. When I, dad back here, JR, he coached some of these guys, by the way. Pivis, did he coach you? Uh, no, but he was my, my, he was my boss. <laughs> he, uh, I, I would just say that utmost respect because he believed in you and he told you. He also told you how it was going to be. And he loves you and, he, and he's not afraid to tell you. Amen. So. He and I had a challenge. I had this opportunity at Arkansas State. I had just gone through my first year redshirting and came back here. I worked at the work summer job. I worked at the school district. I was painting this high school. <laughs> doing whatever I got to do to make my summer money, right? And then I'd get done with that. And he and I would go out to this field same location that you guys are going to play tonight. And we worked. And that summer, I put myself in a position to start the progression of getting a scholarship. And what we did was, yeah, we practiced, we did the fundamentals, we did whatever it was to try to get better that day. But at the end of it, we did a mental exercise. We did this. I'm backed up. He's going to snap me the ball. I'm in Oklahoma playing against the Sooners. Because we looked at the schedule the next year. First game was Oklahoma Sooners. And I was going to go out there, right, win the job at, in training camp. And I had already started to put myself mentally in a position that, hey, I've already won the scholarship. I had two guys I had to beat out one of them. So I go to camp. At the end of every practice during the summer, we did this little exercise. Back up, here it comes. And there it goes. Sure enough, first play of the game. Backed up, Norman, Oklahoma. And there I am. 70,000 people. I'm backed up. I'm running out there. <laughs> Do my moment. And guess what happened? Nothing bad happened. And that's what the key was. I'd been in the moment. I'd been practicing the moment to survive something that I'd never experienced before. It's a trick. Think about that tonight. Think about success. Think about putting yourself in a position that you're assuming this is going to happen. You're assuming this is going to, we're going to win, right? You put your mind to that and you make these plays happen. That is the trick to being successful. That's the trick to playing college football. I'm not here all the time, guys. I want some questions. I got one. Yes. Do you got any Ray Lewis stories? <laughs> <laughs> Which one's going to tell? <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> Look, perfect example of a guy that had everything, lost everything, had everything again. Everybody makes mistakes. Yeah, he had bad guys around him. Dad, mom, we'd come up to the game. After every game, there would be a parking lot, you know, the player parking lot. My car, white Durango, would be right there. $30,000 car, that's what I bought with my first few bucks from NFL, right? Ray's got two blacked out Suburbans. Tricked out, I think he spent 150 on each one at different ways to trick it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's great for him. 
But he had his posse, there, right? Two of these, you know, blacked out. I mean, it was like it was 20 people down there. It wasn't a good scene. But he learned. He learned the hard way. And he admits it. But you know what? Sometimes it's hard. It's hard to leave what you know. And he knew those guys. And those guys were his boys, right? And that's okay. You get it. But at some point, you got to grow up. And you got to put that on the shelf. And you got to say, it's not me anymore. Because that can be a bad thing. And there's bad, bad crew down there. They were in the bottom of that parking lot. They're the guys that got him in trouble, too. He got himself in trouble. But he did come around the other side. That's him as a person, right? He walks in here, he's like, hey, Kyle, what's up? Do I know him, like, on the cell phone if I call him? No. Like, yeah, I don't have his number, is what I'm saying. But, you know what? He's a friend. And he'll always be a friend. But we all go through things, right? Now, as a player, got to be the most intense dude I've ever seen for 17 years. I don't know how. He, look, we all have things. We have issues. He had his own issues, and he was fighting those issues for 17 years. And it was probably that burning desire that was inside of him. He used it as a motivation. He had unbelievable talent. Dad noticed it, like, when I first was up there in 98. They had a nickname for, for Ray. I don't know why it didn't catch on more, but they called him the Cheetah. Because he could run sideline to sideline. It was, it was impressive, right? It was impressive. But he had that motor. I, I remember you all practicing. I'd drive by up there on the, by the old practice field, and if, if there was water in the football field, you did practice field. Right. And I wasn't in the mix, because I was on my yeah. way to other things. But my question is, when you decided to make, not go to Mac, mm -hmm. how much did Dad push you to go out and practice, or how much of that was mm -hmm. you? Or was it a combination? Did you hold each other accountable? <laughs> See this right here? That means zero. He'll tell you this. If you have to be told to go do something, if you have to be told to go practice, it's not going to happen. No, it, it's it's inside of me, you know. And I just, you know what? I just knew I was going somewhere else. Okay, that was me. I knew that Farmington was a great town. I go across the country right now. I'm successful in business right now, so I am going elsewhere, and I'm meeting other people. I just was in in uh, Chicago the other day. I'm trying to sell a product to somebody, and we started talking small talk. I knew the company was out of St. Louis. But when she said she was a Cardinal fan, I had a connection. I'm kind of sidebarring, but I want you to get understand where you come from. And I said, you know, hey, you're a Cardinal fan? Yeah, great. And I said, yeah, I am too. And she's like, well, where are you from? I'm like, a small town south of St. Louis. She's like, me too. I'm like, how far south? About 60 miles. She's like, me too. <laughs> she graduated from Arkansas High School, and she's a, in a CEO level, uh, senior level position of a major company. Graduated in 1980. Uh, Kelly Laws. Anybody know Kelly Laws? I know Kelly. Right? Yeah. She's, she's a spy. She's going, she's doing things. I was in a hospital setting recently. I'm on a board of a hospital. I get talking to somebody in a small group gathering. This was um, two years ago, actually. She's a physician, a trauma center, the number one trauma center in the world. That's, I'm on this board. And so I get into this mix. I'm in healthcare, right? And I look at her and I say, where are you from? A uh, small town south of St. Louis. Uh, this is a theme, guys. I said, you're kidding. Like, and she, she's from Farmington. Her name is Beverly, uh, Melanie Hain. I don't think it's a relation. It's not a relation, but I don't know. Got it. Small world. She is now a, um, a major surgeon, vascular surgeon, in the number one trauma center. She, gra she graduated uh, three years behind me, I think. She lived right across the street from us. I was 506 C Street. She was 505. 
It can happen, guys. I'm telling you. This is crazy, right? Guys, think about where you want to go. It starts tonight. Every opportunity you get, keep a motor. Something bad's going to happen. Obey it. Look at it. Move on. It's got to happen like that, right? But put it in your head. You accept it, and then you move on. And you won't get stuck in the moment. And you are guarantee you will have more positive plays. You'll be around the ball, good things will happen. What else? Anything, Coach? Got one right there. Can you describe the feeling of winning the Super Bowl? No. I still can't do that today. <laughs> I still can't do it today. You know, I tell you, I mean, it's everything I just told you wrapped into one four hour experience. And that is the one team I was really successful with. I mean, I, I never had really, you know, in college, you know, we had a six and five team, but we got beat up all the time. You know, we're playing the, the big schools like Oklahoma, get crushed. But for me, I was a punter, so I was in the best spot because uh, three and out, and I was getting a lot of practice. <laughs> but that one Super Bowl experience was was everything that you really, really aspire to do, right? So when I, again, when I look at that ball, I think about that. And, you know, it means something. What do you think it means to you? <laughs> What's your name again? I forgot. It's Robert Jobs. Robert? Yes. You've been here now 10 years? Yes, sir. Thank you. What does that mean to you? You got any thoughts? Yeah. Just say, you know, you hard work. You can come out of everything, guys. Just hard work. Keep at it. Sorry. Just keep working on it every day. Thanks, Robert. That's awesome. Super Bowl is awesome, man. I want everybody to have that experience. <laughs> I do. I do. I do. This is it, guys. I don't come back all the time, so hopefully this, this helps. Coach State semifinal right out here. That was a pretty good one. Yeah, that's right. Our senior year in high school, we played Sumner. Brought it in. We made them come to us. That was a big deal, right? St. Louis coming down to this small town. We gave them help for a, you know, a half. Three or four touchdowns late, it happened. Matter of fact, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were 21 uh, 7, I think, at half. Yeah. Yeah, I think we put a shock on that team. That was, that, that was a, the away team was, was on this, on the home side now back then, so we had flip flop, but, but uh, yeah, I remember, it was quite, quite St. Louis crowd over there. <laughs> do we all have dreams yet? Do we all have thoughts? Do we all have things we want to do tonight? Right? It can happen, guys, I'm done. I'm here. <laughs>